Okay. Uh, you'll be glad to know this is the last presentation of the day, so we're nearly done. Um, I'll have to do a presentation basically of uh, Laura, what it involves, why it is, and in particular, I work for a startup in the Grenoble area that uses Laura, so also perhaps a little bit of return on how we get on with that. And tomorrow there'll be a workshop using our cards just to, if anybody's interested in how you could actually use the LoRa communication protocol to get your uh, connected objects to talk to a gateway to talk to the cloud. So that's tomorrow morning. So uh, I'll cover very quickly because I know it's uh, delayed. Uh, why, why the guys who are actually Grenoble created LoRa, uh, how it works at a radio level, a bit about when you want to set up a radio network, what you can do, whether you can do it. Uh, the protocol that's the Mac layer for Laura that allows you to have what uh, Orange are going to produce, what Boyka are going to have, a public network. And uh, other, other protocols in that. Uh, two seconds on the alternatives and then an example of what we do. So I'll go quite quickly, but uh, if there's any questions, you can always ask afterwards. Uh, so why do we need another radio protocol? The guys who worked for a company called uh, Ciclio in uh, Saint-Imier wanted a, a radio protocol that allowed them to have something that was low energy, so it's not going to be something you have to be connected to the electricity network to run your object, but that was going to be long distance, so you could use it over outside tens of kilometers, or you could penetrate from outside deep into a building, so things that you can't do with other radio or with GSM or whatever. They wanted it to run in the unlicensed band, so if you want to set up a lower network, you don't have to apply for a license like the telecom authorities do. Uh, you don't have to pay a lot of money to the government. You can, under certain restrictions, set up your gateway, set up your radio, and use it as you wish. And they wanted to be able to have not just you know, a few tens of nodes, but millions of nodes. So quite uh, ambitious targets. Obviously, there's a lot of radio you know, technologies already out there. Uh, so they weren't working in a vacuum. They were really uh, aiming for something that would work on a low energy, but a long distance. And when you look at what the alternatives are today, the only one that really uh, applies in that sector is Sigfox, which is a very similar radio technology. And all the others, you end up with the problem of either, you know, they use up too much energy, you can't run it on batteries, or the range is such that you've got maybe 10, 20 meters, or maybe 100 meters if you're lucky. And then if you have a, put some walls and a building and a concrete wall in the way, and then you're down to, to oops, it doesn't communicate anymore. So what they've done is when you talk about LoRa, there's two things to talk about LoRa. LoRa is both a radio layer, so it's a physical layer, and there's a Mac layer above it, which governs what messages get exchanged, how the nodes talk to each other. So when you talk about LoRa, first of all, you're talking about something physical, you're talking about a, a radio modulation. So they've aimed it at the sub-gigahertz spectrum. Uh, why sub-gigahertz? Because that's where you find the unlicensed spectrum, the so-called ISM band, uh, around the world. So you can, with one radio chip, with a bit of adjustment on the crystal, you can have the same chip and run it worldwide. And you don't have to ask for a permission. They split that band into multiple channels, and then they use a sped spectrum encoding system, which has a very good techniques in terms of radio, which allows you to have a sharing of channels and you pick a different spreading factor, uh, which allows you to have more distance but less bandwidth. Or if you're closer, you can up the bandwidth and cut the distance. And you can also get a distance because using sped spectrum, you can end up with a demodulation of a signal that when you capture it on a spectrum analyzer, all you see is noise. And you can demodulate that signal up to 20 dB below the noise floor, which is you know, very impressive for that. And that's what gives it the long distance. That's the difference in the radio system that allows you to pick up your signal even when it's very, very weak. You can select different bandwidths. Like I say, you see this is a spreading factor on the sped spectrum. So you can choose to go, go long, but you're going to be running with a few bits per second. You're going to be looking at very small packets. Or you can have something, if uh, the guy you're talking to is close, you can up the spreading factor and get, well, you're getting up to uh, 500 kilohertz width. So you're, you're still talking about a packet that's like 200 bytes. So you're not going to be running video of it, but it's great for connecting objects. 
Um, yep. I won't say about that. So when you buy Laura, you buy a chip only from Semtech at the moment. Semtech is the company, American company that uh, Cclio sold themselves to. Uh, and you basically get a chip to run on your endpoint on your card that allows you to access these channels, modulate the radio in this way. You can either have a little antenna like you have on a, a Wi-Fi, or you can also build your antenna onto your PCB and end up with a very small box. They have a reference implementation to make it easy for you. That's when you talk about the endpoint, the actual device. When you come to talk about gateway, i.e. something that's going to concentrate from all these devices, you want something that's going to listen on all the different channels that your endpoints could be transmitting on simultaneously. And there they have a different chip, which costs a lot more and is a lot more difficult to use. But again, from Semtech only. So when you've got yourself a A nice little LoRa card there, and you, you want to use it. Who do you have to ask for permission to use that? And the answer is, luckily, you don't have to ask permission to anybody. Because they've done it in the ISM band, and they've validated their chip, you can then use that without asking permission of anybody. So you can set up your own LoRa network on all your devices, just like you can with your Wi-Fi or your Zigbee, and unlike, for instance, GSM or 3G. Uh, you may have to respect certain rules, you're not allowed to just you know, set your thing up to transmit on all the bands simultaneously all the time, or eventually somebody will complain and they'll come and tell you that's not allowed. But as long as you respect the rules, then you can, you can do this without asking anybody. There's no extra license fee. You don't have to pay anybody per month. It's all you buy the chip and you're away. That's why I like Laura. You don't have to pay anybody. So that's lower the radio, but then you've got a radio, that's fine. How are you then going to get your objects to talk to each other? You know, when are they going to transmit? Who's going to transmit first? What's the format of your frame? All the rest of it. So what they've done with law is they've got a law alliance, so an industry consortium. And what they've done is defined a specific protocol for a specific architecture where you have a central gateway, multiple endpoints. The gateway has this multiple reception chip, so it's got to run off some kind of power supply. But all your endpoints are just on a single channel, so they can run on batteries, be very low power. They've defined a standardized messaging. It's all with uh, an authentication and an encryption system, so that it obviously it's radio, so anybody can pick up your packets and send packets that might be addressed to your node. So on, in LoRa 1, there's all the heading, there's all the authentication necessary so that you know, nobody can read your information, and equally you're not going to receive a packet from somebody else that's trying to destroy your equipment. So they've made a, a public protocol implementation that anybody can have, and they've also made source code for the endpoint, which you can pick up on GitHub, you can download onto your device, and be ready to connect to a lower gateway. I'll skip, I'll skip over the lower one stuff, because we can discuss it tomorrow if you want. So this is from directly from the lower Alliance, what they're aiming for. They're aiming really for battery-powered endpoints. Class A endpoints are the real sweet spot for LoRa. You might say to yourself, okay, but my endpoint, if it's going to be mostly asleep, how is it going to receive information? And the answer is, basically, when it transmits information, it then has a window a little bit later on, two seconds later on, it's going to wake up and go and listen for a return from its information. So in Class A, if you want to receive, you first have to transmit and you have two, two slots at which if a gateway has received your message, it will then, if there's a message coming back for you, you can receive your message. So it's quite easy to have that, and it's all in this source code you can pick up directly off GitHub. We'll manage the timers for you to be able to do two-way transmission. Like I was saying, one of the things they've got is this different selection of bit rates. So you can say, you know, my devices are really far apart. So, okay, I'm going to have to spend more time on air because I've got a, an SPF, an S, a spreading factor where each bit takes longer to transmit. My bit rate is going to go way down. You know, none of you, are, or, or some of you may be old enough to remember a, a 300 board modem, but that's the kind of bit rate we're talking about. But on the other hand, you know, I can pick up my device when it's 14 kilometers away from my, my gateway, which is kind of nice. And then if I'm just indoors, then I can say, okay, I'm not all the way over there. 
I'm probably not in free space either, but you know, I can pick a bit rate that means that for a building like this one, I can have one gateway in a central point and I can cover every room in this building, including the basement, you know, which you can't do with, for instance, Wi-Fi or Zigbee. And like I say, they're built into the protocol, your authentication, I am who I say I am, and your encryption, nobody can read my data. So I don't have to worry about that at this point. And one of, one of the issues I have with law is that um, they've built this protocol that allows you to set up as an operator, where you have standard operator, telecom operator type architecture, where you have a gateway and cells and everybody go all the data goes through your system. There's no current protocol that allows you to do a mesh. It allows me just to have, you know, 10 or 20 devices in my home, maybe from different manufacturers, and allow them to talk to each other. There's nothing like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or you know, none of these protocols are adapted for the lower case. So in fact, this is one of the things that you know, uh, I'm trying to set up is one, a group to produce such a protocol to run on lower hardware that will then not require a gateway, which means that all of your devices can be battery, including you know, nobody needs a gateway to be running to be able to talk between your devices. And so what do we use LoRa for? Uh, Wire is the company I work for. We're trying to do uh, indoor geolocation, like GPS inside. And we've got connected objects to do that. So these objects talk to each other. And because they'll run on batteries, you know, they can't run something like Wi-Fi because they're in a building which can be you know, an industrial building quite large. Bluetooth doesn't have the range. So with LoRa, we have a protocol, a radio, that allows these objects to talk to each other with our proprietary protocol, and then to send all that information to the cloud with a single gateway for, for instance, an industrial building of uh, 10,000 square meters, I can deploy one gateway, my gateway, I don't have to apply for the, any kind of uh, permission, I don't have to go to Orange and pay them every month for a subscription, I, <laughs> sadly for Orange, but uh, <laughs> suits me, but I can pay my, deploy my own gateway and cover a whole building like that, and all of my devices can send all of the data they've collected up to my cloud to be processed, and I can do that while running all of my devices on a pair of uh, AA cells, and I'm aiming for like five-year lifetime on two AA cells, and it's only because I can have low-power microprocessors and a low-power radio that that's possible. One of the things I will say is that what we're using in our system as well as taking advantage of LoRa, we're using the fact that they've got their LoRa 1 as open source. All our code development is using Eclipse. Uh, and our cloud backend are using many open source projects, including MQTT and the Pahu, as well as OpenVPN, Tomcat. All these open source projects are what allows us to have created the system rapidly and without having to develop everything ourselves. Any questions? <laughs>